I asked an artificial intelligence chatbot to design a title for my newest YouTube video that would be most likely to go viral. So today we're going to talk about 10 cheap and easy DIY off-grid projects. Number one on the list is a stick frame shed. This is about as cheap and easy as it gets when building a shed. I just have 18 of these 4x4 four four posts. I've got one every 10 feet. I'm sorry, I have one every 8 feet. So they just naturally line up with the sheeting. I didn't cut them at all. It's the same length this way. They're just stacked on top of each other. And then I used some scrap material for studs across the way here and just threw sheets over it. That's it. And this has been holding up for, I don't know, a couple of years now out here in the high desert of Arizona, even with over 100 mile an hour winds occasionally. And that shop over there is pretty well built in a similar fashion. I have hundreds of gallons in this aquaponics system right here. And all that water comes from the hose connected to this IBC tote that runs over to that surface on the top of that shed. Rainwater harvesting doesn't have to be complicated at all. I've just got a surface to harvest the water. It drops into the gutter all the way across the back and the gutter slopes down to this tube, which currently goes over to the IBC tote that I was telling you about. That's how I got water in the geothermal. A lot of what I do is just scrap material. This is all just scrap material, and that's how I've gotten water over to this container. Where the rain gutter meets the downspout, I put in a wire mesh there to keep out rodents or anything like that. And then where the downspout meets the container, the tank for storage, I put a sock over it and it prevents other smaller debris and it sits there and collects dust and dirt. And you know, after so long you, you pull it off, you just dump out about an inch of dirt, put it back on and you're good to go. This pen here that's there's a goat and a pig in this side and two pigs in this side this was originally my first garden and you can see there's little wire mesh all the way around to keep mice out and all that and really if you just have a cat you won't have any problem with mice you wouldn't even really need the mesh to keep out snakes and mice i just hadn't been out here long and thought it was a good idea but even the native soil I was able to plant and grow a bunch of stuff right out the gate. So you want to get yourself just a simple little garden going. And then you can upgrade as time goes on and do a hoop house that will help you grow in a, into the winter. And this geothermal is temperature regulated. And, you know, I can grow all year round in there. You can start to collect cow pies that were already on your land before you showed up. Or get livestock and harvest all of their manure add it to the hay and straw that they don't eat and start yourself a compost pile and before you know it you'll have a great amendment and you keep turning that into your native soil and you'll have really good soil before long just created this it's a 3600 gallon water cistern 16 feet long six feet wide five feet deep there's a vinyl liner in there then i put a liner across the top through timber all the way across except for enough to a space for a manhole covered it uh, in another liner then covered all of that in dirt and whatnot and the entire manhole is you know the the top liner well the bottom liner will come up and then the top one will go down when i make the manhole so that timber is completely covered and there's just a capsule in there to store water i made three of those cisterns for under 200 dollars water filtration is really easy I have uh, one of those cisterns over here, that's a 3,600 gallon cistern underground there for that side. And then this side goes down into these totes and I put about a quarter cup of bleach into each 330 gallon container when it's brimful, which is less than the CDC recommends, but more than enough to kill the viruses and bacteria. And it's way less chlorine than you would have in city drinking water. Then, when I want drinking water, I pour it down into this Berkey-styled water filter that I built. There's 
all you need is sand, gravel, and charcoal, or activated charcoal, preferably. I made my own activated charcoal, and I just layer it. I, I do about, you know, uh, three inches of gravel, three inches of sand, three ounce, or well, actually six inches of the activated charcoal, and then three more sand and three more gravel, and it just goes through that whole system. I open the tap, fill up. I've got, you see the five gallon container over there? I just keep one of those full and I keep one in the van under the sink. That's where I, I just pump it out. And so I just have it continually in rotation. And the activated charcoal that's in the filtration washes out almost all of the chlorine before you drink it. On this side of my property, I have a pond. And this side of the property slopes down somewhat. So you see this swell, this swell, takes water from this road this is the driveway right here but i've never spilled oil or anything funny like that on it and it's just really clean and that water can just come right down into the pond there's swells around the rest of the homestead that also direct the water around the see this this entire driveway side all the way across the fence line all the way back down around to the pond this swell had about three feet of sorghum from here all the way to the end just brimful packed and i just threw the sorghum seed down and it grew like crazy i didn't even water it really uh, maybe if there was a day with four or five days of dryness you know and uh, otherwise the swells really really work well to grow stuff I added six rows here and i planted potatoes in there and the plan is to run the swell that's around this side of the property over across this way and it'll trickle down and water all six rows and any overflow can go over to the pond. I've lived in this van, I think close to five years now. It's crazy, it doesn't feel like a long time. It's been really comfortable. And something I did that made it really comfortable was for under $1,600, I lined the entire inside with pickets their cedar pickets from the hardware store. I built a countertop, a queen size bed that folds up into two couches. I put a sink and a stove top in the countertop and I built a closet. And that was a really easy project to give myself some shelter when I came out here. And uh, <laughs> it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but it's a good project for off-grid living. Living off-grid, I have to create income. So I have a website, frugaloffgrid.com. I sell red tea, blue tea, green tea, corn flour, black powder tonic, which helps me regulate my blood pressure, eBooks and courses, and I've created multiple sources of income for my homestead, and you can too. You don't have to be passionate about homesteading necessarily. Maybe you really, really love welding, and that should be your website. And I think any web or any homestead should consider creating a website to create sources of income for their homestead. Solar power. <laughs> it doesn't have to be complicated. The system that I use mostly currently is my Zendier Super Based Pro. It's a power station, so it's all in one. Pretty affordable and pretty easy. So I've just got this guy sitting on the countertop. I'm in the middle of transitioning from one system to another. So I just bring this out here. Zendier has an AC plug that actually it goes into the DC system the solar panels and it just allows you to use this kind of plug So that guy will charge up. It usually takes an hour or two Then I have a hundred percent charge That helps to have a 1400 watt solar array there. It charges super fast. It can take that whole array and a lot more and it's just super easy. I plug that in, I can run everything. I've got Starlink and internet, my phone charging, the laptop, the computer, <laughs> everything going off of that one small system. Um, all you need for a solar system is solar panels. If you're gonna build one from scratch, I mean, you need solar panels, you need a charge controller, an inverter, and a battery bank. <laughs> And a battery bank and I, I I would suggest going with a 12 volt system at first if you're on a budget because four 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries is 400 amp hours of storage which is enough to start a small homestead but if you did a 48 volt system then those four 
100 amp hour batteries is only 100 amp hours it just makes sense it's that's the most expensive thing is batteries so go 12 volt get at least 400 amp hours to run your homestead and then expand or or develop your system from there built this root cellar the same way i built my cisterns it's just a hole except for i did some walls that are sandbag walls um, it's just got some shelving in there so it's uh, eight feet by eight feet and it's ten feet deep and I threw timber across the top threw a tarp over it put a manhole in some ventilation and it stays stays about 30 to 40 degrees warmer in the winter and 20 to 30 degrees cooler in the summer That's partially if I would have went deeper with it it would work better but I hit the beachy and at the time I, I was just doing things with my shovel and decided to just go ahead and build it up. I think I'll build some retaining walls out here and just build the sand all the way up and then it should get to about 40 to 50 degrees. Uh, well, it should stay around 50 degrees all year. Well, it's re pretty cold right now, so I'm gonna wrap up the video, but look, there's, I just threw a tire changer in so I can change tires. That's a cool project. Build an anvil, do some blacksmithing, get a forge, forge, <laughs> smelt, melt some stuff down and cast some things there's all kinds of stuff you can do on your homestead so subscribe so you don't miss the next video i hope you enjoyed the most viral video i've ever made according to artificial intelligence <laughs> and well, i'll catch you guys on the next video